Here you are coding your data science analysis and all is well. You're hacking your way around, doing great exploratory data analysis. You install a few packages here and there, and after a few weeks, you're able to get the model that is doing the job reliably well. Now, when you give the code to the ops people, they want to cry because nothing works. The dependencies are all over the place, and in production, they are getting some borderline arcane CUDA bugs. There must be a better way to smooth out the process, especially given that the modeling is cyclical. You experiment, you simplify the code, you deploy, and then you iterate. In today's video, I wanted to showcase a workflow I was thinking about for quite some time to ease deployment of machine learning models. This workflow makes heavy use of Docker at its core. In typical web development, there is a sophisticated continuous integration and continuous deployment flow to bring the new code in production. This smooths a lot of the problem one can face in something as complex as a web application. One of the core technologies that make this sort of motion possible is Docker, which abstracts the underlying hardware and make an exact image of the state required to run a project. This image is then easy to share and deploy in other computing environment. The idea for the Docker data science workflow is quite simple. All development from start to finish happen within a Docker container. We basically have three steps in this workflow. Experimentation, where we happily hack around. Optimization, where we are making little improvement to the code, formatting, the speed of the model, and the size of whatever we're going to ship. Finally, there's a deployment step where we are preparing to ship the work to production. Let's go into into code to see how this actually looked like. I have a cool cookie cutter of setup that we're going to work through. And also I'll show you a great way to secure your Docker image at the end, as well as making them super optimized. Thanks to today's sponsor, ChainGuard, which create and maintain secure and tiny Docker images. One of the founder of uh, ChainGuard actually was from Google on the infrastructure team for a long while. And their whole thing is that you get zero CVE in your image, which basically stands for common vulnerability and exposure. So that's pretty important because what you want to ship to production is something that is kind of secure. Okay, so here we are in the code. This is like a sample kind of uh, uh, structure that I've uh, I've put together um, it's a mix of like some cookie cutter uh, template and uh, some modification I made to make it a bit more uh, readable so basically here you have a bunch of folders here you have the config this is where you're gonna put your configuration this is where the data should be kept uh, here you have the docker file that are relevant the model that are pickled, we put them into the model folder. Here, the notebook is where you're gonna actually do your experimentation and, and store the notebook. The script here over here is where you're gonna kind of put the evaluation script that you're um, running or how to generate the model, the stuff that will be run in a production server of some sort. And a test is where you can keep your unit test if you are doing test-driven development with data science. Uh, yeah, and uh, here, this is kind of the name of my uh, uh, project here. This is where you're gonna put like all of the things that can be reused in like your notebooks, your scripts, a bit everywhere, you put them there. So that's the overall structure and you're gonna see there's like a big make file that um, I have set up over here. And this make file, uh, if you don't know, like a make file is kind of a way to um, simplify bash scripting, right? Um, and then you can like uh, have variable in there. So this is all the variable I'm using and uh, you have command that you run. So then I don't have to write, let's say, I don't have to write like Docker build T base. I can just run in a Docker and then it will just run the stuff. And then I can just fiddle around here instead of like trying to do too many things outside. So uh, there's this make file and that's kind of it. And uh, with this, I can have like a, Kind of docker data science workflow where like literally docker containers are the central piece uh, and if you look at the docker file here i have a jupyter base uh, notebook uh, base image it's a base kind of a configuration that you're using as a skeleton and then you can run a bunch of commands to uh, augment it and the base plus your stuff is now your image that you're using so I'm creating this image and then I'm gonna create a dev image where I'm gonna just copy a bunch of stuff and set up my work directory. Uh, but this thing, you can modify it as you want. So if you want the base image that is a bit more lightweight, right? Uh, you can optimize here. I'm gonna show you afterward like um, a base image from a chain guard that is like super, super small and that is oriented toward like PyTorch specifically. 
So uh, here, let's say I want to uh, start working on my um, uh, uh, data science project, whatever. I just have to do this in it Docker, and then this will build my image um, for me, right? It's building the image and it's running through like these steps that I have, and then it will run through that that step over here. And how I did that is I just hit this thing, right? So it ran the base image and then the other dev image that I have here with a bunch of variable that I have. Once I have this, if you open Docker, which Docker is another thing that you're gonna have to install um, on your computer, and then you have to fiddle around like some BIOS stuff usually uh, to get it working. Uh, but as soon as you have it, like you, you have access to all of this. And you can see here, I have these images that are have been created. And you have two things with Docker. You have the image. The image is nothing but like a set of instruction. Once you have the image, you can create the container, which is like, now you're virtualizing that environment into like whatever Docker is. And then you can kind of enter this mini computer to do whatever you, you want. And here you see here it's unused. Um, and in here it will be running. So let's run it. You do make, um, I think it's create container. I'm going to create the container, right? And if you see the container is here now, it's YouTube dev. You can expect it if there's files that are being created or whatever. This is what's in it right now. And in the work directory, you could see um, in the work directory, you're going to see like this, my folder structure on, on VS Code. So this is running right now, right? It's running for 51 seconds. And there's nothing happening really, right? Um, I'm in it over here, right? And uh, the only thing I need to do now is to actually um, uh, start uh, my to work. Like, and if I start to work here, it's as if I'm entering a computer and then I can just do that. I'm going to open JupyterLab. Now JupyterLab is open and now this boot up JupyterLab and now I'm here, right? And uh, at this point I can go into the notebook section and start to work uh, over here. Select that kernel and I'm working on my stuff. I can print, uh, I can do hello and this should run um properly this is not running on my machine it's running on the container it's running here right and this the the, the kernel for jupyter lab is here long story short now um if i am done with my analysis and everything is well and i give this whole repo to like uh ops people so that they can uh, deploy whatever model i have the chances that they like we're gonna fuck it up is very low uh, because it doesn't depend on my machine or like anything I've done. It depends on like this thing, right? Now, right, um, we come to the image part. If you look here, this one is the one I'm using, right? And you look at the vulnerability, um, uh, like this image kind of suck. Like this image is not like production kind of ready. You see here, just Ubuntu, like we have some like uh, things that are uh, medium severity in the vulnerability on the OS uh, that I'm uh, using as a base. Now I'll, I'll show you like um, the image from uh, chain guard. So let's say I have like a, a deep learning kind of analysis and I want to like have the minimal PyTorch uh, uh, setup for the, my thing to run. I can just pull this one now that we have it. Um, you see that there's many version here that have been built and rebuilt and uh, and this one was latest that we we've pulled on and um, the cool thing here is that you can have vulnerability that will be uh, uh, detected and you can detect it with like the same thing I, I, I had or um, uh, how's it called a docker scout right and um, uh, it will tell you if there's a, a a vulnerability or exposure that you you have in this docker image and like let's say there's a, a bunch of vulnerability here on these containers right so gitlab is here there's like Kimio here Druid, loki whatever um they will tell you when it's fixed and then you kind of get this automatic type of checking all the time and how they're doing this is because all of this stuff is based on their own operating system which is that thing right it's wolfy and it's not an actual um operating system that you can use. It's one that is made 
press press fully for like docker uh, so this is small and then they have control over the whole thing from that little operating system to like everything that they attach to it so this is why they can detect uh, a whole bunch of things so if we come back to um the this uh, docker uh, driven development the benefit from this um is that you are um always inside like a very um contained uh, environment that's a bit like a virtual environment except that you also have the os that you're um controlling now also this has massive benefit because now like uh, whatever machine that you're running this thing on it should produce like replicable results all the time the um, downside of this is you have to use docker and you have to understand what the heck docker is and set it up properly um, to be honest like if you were um, not uh, if you're just doing exploratory data analysis and it doesn't have to do with like actually deploying a model I don't think that uh, type of workflow is that necessary. I would go for something a bit more lightweight. Uh, you have the virtual environment and then you have your pip install, whatever, and then you're doing your exploratory data analysis on Jupyter and that's kind of that. Um, but as soon as you hit the, um, I need to deploy this and I'm going to get, I'm going to monitor what the heck is happening and then I'm going to have to do this thing over again, exploration, like uh, iterate and then deploy. Um, this is where that kind of uh, connection to the deployment through Docker uh, is really key, right? Um, because then it makes the whole thing more smooth. And uh, if you have to take like a week to learn this, it will have great benefit because actually you understand what the heck is happening in production now. And Docker in general is a really like a, um, it's a paradigm that is used in many things, right? Especially in uh, web development. Um, but as soon as an application becomes a bit complex, uh, Docker, um, is a solution that is good to like keep replicable environment. So that's it. I hope this was uh, useful and it was like uh, good for you to kind of um, see another way of structuring your data science project. Uh, I'll put a bunch of link into the documentation so that you can see how to get started if uh, need be. And uh, if you have any question, let me know in the comments.